All children, except one, grow up. They soon know that they will grow up, and the way Wendy knew was this. One day, when she was two years old, she was playing in a garden, and she plucked another flower and ran with it to her mother. I suppose she must have looked rather delightful, for Mrs. Darling put her hand to her heart and cried, Oh, why can't you remain like this forever? This was all that passed between them on the subject. But henceforth, Wendy knew she must grow up. You always know after you are two. Two is the beginning of the end. The town of Kirimur has an ancient history and a charming heart. In the popular imagination, it is best known as the birthplace of J.M. Barry, the novelist who made his fame and fortune by creating the character of Peter Pan. Barry and his creation feature large in the life of modern Kirimur. There is a statue of Peter Pan in the centre of the town, while nearby is the J.M. Barry Memorial Fountain, erected not long after Barry's death in 1937. Meanwhile, on the hill of Kirimur on the north side of the town is the Kirimur Camera Obscura, built into a cricket pavilion gifted to Kirimur by J.M. Barry in 1930. In return, he was granted the freedom of Kirimur, the first and only person to have been awarded that honour. J.M. Barry is buried in a family grave in the cemetery on the south side of the hill, overlooking the town. But the main focus for pilgrimage for lovers of Peter Pan and J.M. Barry is a terraced house on Brecon Road, the main road leading east away from the town centre. J.M. Barry was born on 9 Brecon Road, and today the house in which he was born, along with its neighbour at 11 Brecon Road, is preserved as a museum in his memory. To the rear of the house is a wash house where Barry, then aged seven, performed his first play, and which formed the inspiration for the Wendy House in Peter Pan. A nearby garden is home to another statue of Peter Pan, standing on top of a tree stump which has been intricately, if rather spookily, carved to give the impression that there is beings living within it. Wilkie's shelter was gifted in 1928 by the two Mrs Wilkie to the memory of their brother. He was a solicitor by profession and as Borough Chamberlain, clerk to the school board and treasury of the First United Free Church of Kirimur. The shelter was given to the town council as a replacement of the old and dilapidated golf house which used to stand in its location. The views from the shelter reveal several of Kirimur's connections to the Romans. In Cadham Wood, the remainder of a Roman road is still visible today. It was part of a 150 mile long road from west to east built by Severus to connect Roman forts and marching camps. The prominent hill behind is called Cat Law, as it is supposed to resemble the shape of a sleeping feline. With its 671 metre height, it is classed as a Graham, the class of hills below Munro's and Corbett's. The views from Cat Law are impressive, and locals have long praised its merits. J.M. Barry wrote that, Nowhere else is the heather quite so blue, nor do the burns flow quite so pleasantly. Catlaw was throughout its history often a place of hiding, although the hill does not offer much cover on its smooth flanks and top. In 1745 it was the hiding place of Robert Wedderburn of Percy, who during the rebellion raised a company of Clover and Prossen men for Lord Ogilvy. Others looking for cover on Catlaw were local whisky smugglers who tried to evade the high taxes on the liquid. The standing stain on the hill is one of several ancient monoliths that used to exist in the area. Standing stones were constructed in prehistoric cultures in many parts of the world and their exact use is unknown. They might have been erected to play a part in religious rituals, as boundary markers or as a form of early calendar. Records show that the standing stain used to have a second fragment lying next to it, but this had vanished before 1909. Some take this as proof that the stone was either part of a pair of standing stones or even an ancient stone circle. Legend has it that three robbers sat down to divide their ill-gotten gains beside the standing stone and the stone split in two, 
burying the robbers beneath it. No one has ever dared since uplift the robbers' loot, as the same fate might befall anyone who tries. <laughs>